my teacher if I had one lesson left of electrochemistry. That is what I'm going to be discussing today. Um, the first thing that's very important, what I would say to you is make sure you have your physical science examinable content. Every single one of you should have one of these. It might not look exactly the same as mine, but you should have one of these. If you do not have one, please ask your teacher for one. I will also be putting it on the system so that you have it. Because without this document, no matter what, how much you learn, you might not be learning the correct things. So let us have a look at electrochemistry today. Electrochemistry is on page 20 in my document. Right. Now, I refer to this as the Science Bible. And the reason I refer to this as the Science Bible is because every single thing you need to know for the exams gets told to you in here. Right. So it's very important that you actually go through this document and that you check that you know all this work. I'm going to be going through this document just very, very quickly because you have it, but I just want to point out the important parts to you. And if you have a look, you can see mine is already colored in. And this is what yours should look like because this is the, these are the important things that you need to know in the exam. Right, so let us get started off if we have a look at electrochemical reactions. The first one we need to know is that we get electrolytic and we get galvanic salts. Okay. Right, what is very, very important there is to know that in galvanic cells, chemical energy is converted into electrical energy. Right, let me repeat. Chemical energy is converted into electrical energy. A galvanic cell is also known as a voltaic cell, and it's a self-sustaining electrode reaction. Okay. Then we must know that an electrolytic cell is a cell in which electrical energy is converted to chemical energy. Right, then our definitions, all these definitions you shouldn't have a problem with. Um, we need to know what oxidation is. We need to be able to define it as a transfer of electrons. We also need to be able to um, define it as an increase in the oxidation number. Right. We need to be able to define reduction as a decrease in the oxidation number. I've put a little crib note here, oil rig. I think most of you do use that one. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Right. And then oxidation is an increase in oxidation number. Yeah, I've explained it. What happened? Yeah, I had Cu. Cu's oxidation number here is zero. And then it became Cu2+. Plus. Right. So in other words, this is oxidation. And why is it oxidation number? Because there was an increase in my oxidation number. It is also um, oxidation because there was a loss of E. Electron. Right. Reduction is a decrease in the oxidation number. Here we had chlorine and it became Cl negative. So from naught it went to negative one, which means the oxidation number decreased. And then the other definition it says it is a gain of electrons. So what actually happened for chlorine to become negative, it had to gain electrons. The one that a lot of us struggle with is the agents. Right, my oxidizing agent is the substance that is reduced or the substance that gains electrons. While my reducing agent is the substance that is oxidized or the one that has lost electrons. We must know our anode is where oxidation takes place and our cathode is where reduction takes place. Okay. And then we also need to know what an electrolyte is. An electrolyte is a substance that conducts electricity. And how does it conduct electricity? By the movement of electrons. And then we have electrolysis. It's a chemical process in which electrical energy is converted to chemical energy. Right, so this all fits together. Now, what I'd like to explain to you, what I would suggest you do to make your learning even easier, is to create a mind map for yourself. Okay. Now, what I like to do is I like to make my mind maps 
in my science Bible or in my document. And the reason I like to do this is because this is what I, where I'm learning from. And these documents are the same as what we get in the exams. So you're not going to feel very unfamiliar when you get to the exams. If you have a look at this, we have our potential table A and we have our potential table B. Okay. I'm only going to work with my potential table B, as most people in the free state do do that. Okay, so the first thing I always say to my learners is, how do you know which table you must work with? Then I tell them it's the one that you like. And which one do you like? You like this one. Can you see? L-I-K-E, like. Okay, so the first thing I normally tell my learners is, when you get your paper, draw a line through this one. Because you know what? It's very, very easy to make a mistake. And this one you get first. So it's naturally when you're nervous to work on this one first. So I say let's draw a line through it and we know that we're going to use the one that we like. Okay. Now what crib notes are we going to write down here for ourselves? They're not really crib notes but tricks. They're just things to help you remember when you're in the exams. Right, the first thing I'm going to draw for myself is I'm going to just draw a little beaker. And in that beaker, I am going to say, you know what? Um, I'm going to have my, I'm going to have two electrodes, okay? And you should know that your electrode is there to help with the conductivity, okay? And then I'm going to have to have an electrical source, okay? Let's just put it there. We're going to get back to that just now. Because why? Remember what was the definition we, we had? We said that the definition was... We said that the definition was an electrolytic cell is a cell in which electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. So the important thing here is we must have some form of electricity. Okay. I'm not going to put the poles in yet because you'll understand now what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to say to my, myself, right, oxidation is loss, reduction is is gain. Okay? And then I'm going to remember that oxidation takes place at the anode. Okay? And reduction will take place at the cathode. Okay? Right. So now we know oxidation is loss. So if there's a loss of electrons, then it means that that will be take place at the anode. And if there is a gaining of electrons, that will take place at the cathode. The other little thing we can remind ourselves over here is that I'm definitely going to need a liquid. And that is going to be called my electrolyte. And remember what has happened now. Now you... Um, no, because you've learned your definition, that an electrolyte is a substance that allows for the conductivity of electricity through the ions. Okay, so now you've immediately got, you've immediately got your definition here as well. So now you can remember this. Okay, what happens here, ele oxidation is lost. So that means electrons are lost over here. So what is going to happen to those electrons? They are going to move across there. You agree with me? And then on the other side, what have we got? Reduction is gain. So those electrons are going to be moving yeah. Okay. So this side wants electrons. That side's going to be giving away electrons. Okay. So this is going to be the positive side of my cell, while that is going to be the negative side of my cell. Right. Now, please remember matrix. When they do this in the exams, most of our books explain it in this way, and our pictures look very similar. They like to swap it around. So we're going to have a look at a question, and then we're going to see if we can apply all of this and can understand it from our table. The other thing that we must know at our table is, and it's very easy, it says, yeah, increasing, reducing ability. Right. So in other words, as it goes up, the reducing ability is increased. I always also write down here anode 
we're going to see just now. We're going to expl I'm going to explain it to you in a while. And I write down my cathode over here. Right, so I write down my cathode at the bottom. But we're going to be getting to that a little bit later. Okay, now let's quickly have a look at what type of questions can we expect. I've, I've looked for a little bit more difficult type questions because I think most of us have got the easy type questions. Although I must say, um, the two, um, I'll discuss this a little bit later as well, but the two that I did choose are very unconventional questions, and that's why I chose them. Right, they say to us the diagram below shows the electrochemical cell used to purify copper. Okay, so the first thing you've got to remember here is when they say purify copper, it means what do you want? It means you want copper. And what do you have? You have impure copper. Okay. Right. So this is quite important for you to remember. You have impure copper and you want it to become pure copper eventually. Right. Now they've got something underlined here. A solution that conducts electricity is used in the cell. Okay. Right. Let's see. First of all, I wouldn't go and immediately go and look what I would think A and B would be. Because remember, you've got the idea. We're going to, as we go on, I'll show you. Right. So let's quickly see. One word for the underlined phrase. Okay. So now look for the underlined phrase. A solution that conducts electricity. And hopefully, you should know this because we've done that, and that is an electrolyte. Okay, now, which type of chemical, electrochemical cell is illustrated here? Okay, so they basically want to know from here, is this an electrolytic cell? And, well, at this stage we've only done electrolytic cells, so we're going to say yes, this is an electrolytic cell. And why are we going to say it's electrolytic? You can say electrolytic or galvanic. Why are we going to say? Because our first clue here was we've got power. And remember, what, is, what happens? What's the energy conversion? Electrical to chemical. So that is my end. Now they say to me, in which direction from A to B or from B to A will the electrons flow in the external circuit? Okay. Now, here we go. Let us now go and look. What are my reactions going to be? Remember, what have I got? I've got impure copper, okay? So basically, I'm going to have something like copper, could be copper sulfate or whatever, but I'm going to have a copper ion. That's what I'm going to have. And what do I want to end up with? I want to end up with but remember, I don't have a copper ion when I start with. So the first thing I want is for a copper ion to form. Okay? So what's going to happen for a copper ion to form? I can have a look, yeah, if I want to. Um, remember, we're busy with 2 plus, yeah? Right, we can't make use of that one because that is not the correct one. Yeah, it's a 2 plus one. Now, can you see if you weren't quite sure how, how this worked? Copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons gives me copper. But remember, I can also say, say copper right at the other way around. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to have two reactions. I'm going to have one reaction like that, and my other reaction is going to be like this. All right. So this is the first reaction I want. Why is this the first reaction I want is because I've got impure copper. And that impure copper, part of it is, I want it to form ions. Because why? I want to take those ions to form pure copper. Okay, now I have a look. My other reaction will then, of course, say Cu2 plus, plus two electrons gives me copper. Okay, now this is the positive. Okay, which means my two electrons that are given off over here are going to move that way. Right, my two electrons are going to move that way. 
And where are my two electrons going to come from? My two electrons are going to come from the fact that in here, this A is impure copper. Right. And what's going to happen? My two electrons is going to move that way. And into the water, uh, into the electrolyte, I'm going to get a copper ion. Now what's going to happen? Now two electrons are going to move that way. And they are going to combine over here to give me pure copper. Okay. So let's see if we can answer the question now. In which direction from A to B or from B to A will the electrons flow? In the external circuit. Because remember people, the electrons flow in the external circuit, but the ions will flow in the electrolyte. Okay, so therefore, can you see my arrows? My electrons will flow from A to B. So my answer here will be from A to B. Then they say to me, which electrode A or B is the cathode? Now, ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to take a guess. You've also now done this work already. Yeah, I told you copper becomes Cu2+, plus, so that's this one. Right, this is A. This is A's reaction. Now, you've got to ask yourself, is this oxidation or is it reduction? Okay, from this we can see it is oxidation. Why is it oxidation? Because it's the loss of electron. Okay? So this immediately is going to become my anode. Okay? And if that is my anode, then this must be my cathode. Okay. So in other words, which electrode A or B is my cathode? So B is going to be my cathode. Now they're going to ask me which one is the impure copper. And can you remember I said the first reaction we wanted is we wanted uh, um, copper ions to form because this one was the impure one. So my impure copper is then A. Right. How will the mass of electrode A change as the reaction proceeds? Choose from increase, decrease, or remain the same. Matrix, please. We're giving you a choice. We're not asking you write an essay. We're giving you a choice. So you've got to look at these three and choose one of them. Okay. Now remember what did I say? I said that we want copper ions. So the copper that is in the impure copper is going to form copper ions, which means the mass of A must therefore decrease. Okay? And you are going to get one mark for decrease. And now they say, give the reasons for your answer. Okay. And what is the reason for your answer? Go and look at your equation. Copper is being oxidized or is oxidized. to form Cu2+. Plus. And very important people, you must tell me Cu. You, you, you must write this exactly like that. Okay. So what's happening is the copper that is inside the impure copper is forming copper ions. And those copper ions are then going to be reduced to form so the copper is being oxidized, and then it will be reduced. Okay. This is a question they like to ask a lot. One of the things that they haven't asked here, which is more of a higher grade type question, so please listen carefully, is remember this is impure copper. So there are other impurities in here as well. And what happens to those impurities? A lot of them are metals. And what happens to them is they sink to the bottom. And they form like a little bit of a sludge there. They can further be purified to give you other metals. So they, that sludge over there has quite a good economic value. Right. And it is then sent to other people or bought by other people who will further purify it. Okay. 
The big thing here is they can also often ask you and say to you, know, well, you know what, there's iron in there as well, and why is the iron not going to, why is the iron not going to form, or the iron, iron's not going to be form iron. And then that all has to do with the reducing ability and the oxidizing ability, right? At this stage, your copper is being oxidized, or your impure copper is being oxidized. Okay, so you have a look at that. Remember that that has to do with your economic value. And then if they mention another metal, you've got to go and have a look at that, where that metal is on this table. Okay, right. If the metal was towards the bottom, then we could have a problem. Okay, so you just have a look at that. Okay, I'm going to look at one more question of this before we move on to the next part of electrochemistry. Right, yeah, they say to us, in an electrochemical cell below, we have carbon electrodes, and they are used during the electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride solution. Okay, now, one of the things we must remember here, first of all, is they've told me it's an electrochemical cell. If they didn't tell me that, I would have had a look at this. Okay, right. They say that the balanced equation in the net overall cell reaction is the following. Is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? Well, people, we have a power source here. Okay, so in other words, it is receiving energy. It is receiving energy. And therefore, it will be endothermic. Right. Is P the anode or the cathode? And give the reason for your answer. Okay, now... In this question, I would just have a look at the positive and the negative immediately. And I would say that um, this is going to be my anode and this is going to be my cathode. We can look at the reactions in a little while. Okay, so I can say that um, they asked me, is it anode or cathode? So give your answer. It's my anode. And then, yeah, you can actually say your reason is because it's connected, connected to the positive, to the positive terminal of the cell or battery, at least. Okay, right. So we're going to write down that. Right now, they say to me, write down the formula of gas X. Write down the formula of gas Y. Then they want the reduction half reaction. Okay, now let us quickly have a look. My anode, what takes place at my anode? Oxidation takes place at my anode, right? And what is oxidation? Oxidation is the loss of electron, okay? Now we need to have a look at our equation. Let's see what happened here. This, can you see that this is an ion? It's a Cl negative ion. So we've got two Cl negative, right? Okay. And on the other side, we have that. Okay. So these two must go together because we cannot have anything else. Chlorine can't become something else. Right. Now, yeah, chlorine is negative. And the only way chlorine can become zero is if it actually loses electrons. Okay, so this would then be, um, they want the gas in X, okay? So my gas in X will then be the chlorine gas, okay? Because what has happened? <clears throat> I have chloride ions in here, and they will form chlorine gas. Okay, very important name or formula. So you could have written chlorine or Cl2. Be very careful, because sometimes they say formula, okay? And other times they say name. Yeah, they say the name or the formula, okay? Right, now let us quickly have a look at our other reaction. Now they want to know from me what is the gas in Y, okay? So all we had on this side was H2O, okay? And something had to happen to the H2O, right? It became H2 plus 2OH negative, all right? 
So in this case, what, and Nestle Electron's involved. We're going to write that in just now. So what has happened here now, I have H2 gain. So this will then be H2 or hydrogen gas. Okay. Now they want to know from me what is the reduction half reaction. Okay. We've already established that this one here at the bottom is my oxidation reaction, which means this must be my reduction reaction. Now, people, you don't have to know this reaction out of your heads. All we now need to do is go and look for it on our standard electrode potential table. Right. And if we have a look at our standard electrode potential table, my I immediately went to one over here. And I'm actually very glad it went to this one because it is the wrong one. Right, let's just have a look here. Can you see here? Okay. Um, can you see here we have two H2O? So you, if you had written it the other way, it would have been an oxidation reaction. But what I want to show you here is here you have two H2O. But you, here you have H2O2. So this is immediately you ignore it because you don't have the same thing. Right. Here we have another one. Here we have 2H2O, okay? But can you see we have oxygen? And in our reaction, can you see we don't have oxygen? We have OH negative. So that is out immediately as well. Right, let's carry on. The, uh, right, here we have H2O2. Be careful because it's H2O2. That is hydrogen peroxide, so we can't use that one at all either. Right. And am I now missing this formula? I did check for it this morning. Uh, let's see. We can't use that one either. We've mentioned that one. It's because I'm looking far too low down. Right, let's have a look over here. Okay, let's have a look there. Can you see there we have 2H2O plus 2 electrons gives me H2 gas plus 2OH negative. And remember these are written as reduction. So that one is perfect. So all you do now is you align that little one and you go and you write it down. So what would my half reaction be? Exactly like it is matrix, please. I see so many people choosing the right formula and then they forget something else. So we write there 2H2O plus 2 electrons gives me H2 gas plus 2OH negative. Right, we write it down exactly like that. Do not leave the negatives out here. And please, 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 I'm going to do it in big red colors. Please do not do that. Because then you are saying to the examiner, you know what, I don't really know which direction this reaction goes. I don't really know what's going on here. And then we cannot give you the mark. Then they say to us, is the solution in the sal acidic or alkaline base um, after the completion and give the reason for your answer? Well, <clears throat> if you have a look here, you are going to end up in this equation, you are going to end up, yeah, you've got sodium. So you are going to end up with that sodium combining with the OH. So you are going to end up with NaOH. And that is therefore going to be basic. Right, so you're going to write down, they asked you, is it going to be alkaline, acid or alkaline or basic? You can write down whichever way one you want to. I would have said basic, and then I would have said why? Because the OH negative ions combine with in a positive ion. Okay, right. So this is how you need to approach this. Please remember, people, there are only, and I just want to mention, go back to the Science Bible for you and show you, there are only a few that you are needed to be able to do. And once again, it comes back to the fact that if you've gone through this document, 
and you've made your little notes, then you don't have a problem. Okay. Um, right, so let's quickly have a look here. They say to us, yeah, we need to know this for, there we go, um, for the decomposition of copper chloride, electroplating, refining of copper. We've just done the refining of copper one. And then the electrolysis of concentrated solution of sodium chloride. And that's the second one we've just done, or one of them, a similar one. And then the recovery of aluminium metal. Very, very important to all of these, you must be able to describe the risks to the environment. Okay? And in most cases, most of them make use of a lot of energy, because remember, you're supplying electricity. And our energy is created by burning of coal, which means lots of CO2 is given off, which means lots of greenhouse gases are given off. And then in particular, in the recovery of the aluminium, we have the red muck. So that is what you need to, to know here. Right, the next thing we're going to look at is our galvanic salt. Okay, and what is going to happen here is, we've already discussed this, our galvanic cells are self-sustaining, so they make use of chemical energy and convert it into electrical energy. Okay, so that is what happens is my galvanic cells chemical to electrical, so there is not going to be an electrical source when we have a look at this. Right, and um, let us quickly have a look at a few other things, and then we'll go and draw up a little crib note thingy to remember again. Right, we must understand the movement of ions in the solution. We must understand the direction of the electron flow. We must be able to write down the half reactions. We must be able to state the functions of a salt bridge. I know all of you are really bright and you can do this. But you know what? This is the difference between getting good marks and just average marks. It completes the cell and it keeps the cell electrically neutral. We must understand the notations. I will discuss that as well. And we must predict um, which one is oxidation, which one is reduction. Write down the overall reaction and be able to determine the EMF. So that is what we have to do over there. Now let's quickly go back to our little, remember you're getting this table. So what are you going to do? Your mind map, let's call it a mind map, that's a bit better. Right, what am I going to do? In this case, I'm going to draw two beakers. Right, okay. I'm definitely going to have a salt bridge. I'm going to have my electrodes. Okay, and this time, people, my electrodes is connected to a voltmeter or to a light or to anything that will be able to indicate that there's a flow of electricity for me. Okay, so what are the few things I must remember? I must remember that, yeah, we are also going to have electrolytes. We already know what electrolytes are, okay? We must also know that we have a salt bridge. And we know that our salt bridge, um, what the functions of the salt bridge are. Okay. And then we are going to have our anode and our cathode. I write it this way particular because it's easy when we write down the... Um, cell notation for us, okay? And at my anode, I'm still going to have oxidation, and at my cathode, I'm still going to have reduction. Right, my ions, my movement of ions is going to be in the salt bridge and within the beakers, while my movement of electrons is going to be outside the beaker, okay? Now, when I write my cell notation, I'm always going to start off with my anode. So I'm going to start off with my anode, then I'm going to have a, a line, okay? I'm going to fill in the rest for you just now. Then we're going to have a salt bridge, and we're going to fill in the rest a little bit later. Right, now let's quickly have a look. Um, this is where we have to use these tables. And when we have a look at the, use these tables, please remember once again that these reactions are spontaneous, okay? So my anode is always going to 
be at the top one is always going to form my anode, and the bottom one is going to form my cathode. Okay, and I'm going to write my anode, um, my oxidation reaction. I'm going to write in a different direction. Okay, we're going to get to that in a little while. Right, so let's quickly see if we can find a question like this. Okay, here we go. <coughs> We have um, a question. I will show you people just now where I got these questions as well so that you can um, get them. Right. We have a nickel rod which is placed in a beaker containing silver, chlor silver nitrate. And there's a reaction that takes place. They say name the formu name or formula of the electrolyte. Okay. I definitely would have gone for formula for the simple reason they give it to me. So it would have been silver nitrate. Okay. Now they say to me the oxidation half reaction that takes place. They tell us yes, definitely a reaction here. Okay. So basically what is going to happen is my nickel, because remember that is nickel, is going to form a nickel ion. Okay. Now we might not know this. So best we do is go and look at our standard electrode potential table. So let's have a look over here. Can you see that over here we have, um, yeah, we have nickel. Yeah, we have nickel here. Right. Okay. And the only other one that we can have here is my silver. So we go and we have a look for silver. And you're going to find silver right down here. Let's move up. There we go. Silver is going to be right at the bottom. So what did I tell you? We need to remember that the one at, at the top is going to be my oxidation reaction. So it's going to be nickel forms the nickel 2 plus iron plus 2 electron. Okay? You're going to write it in the reverse reaction. So yeah, they want my oxidation half reaction, so I'm going to tell them it is Ni forms Ni2 plus plus 2e electron. Okay. Then they want, the next question, they want a balanced equation for the overall redox reaction. Okay, now we're going to need both those reactions, okay? Because remember, what is a redox reaction? It's a combination of the two. So my first reaction I've already got. Well, let's write it down. We've got it over there already. Now I've got to go and look for silver. Now remember, if nickel was oxidation, it means silver will be reduction. So all I'm going to do now is I write down my silver reaction, and that gives me silver. Okay? They only wanted the net reaction, so you don't have to show all of this. But you can. I'm going to draw a line. Okay. Now, can you see when we have electrons, they must balance each other out. So we've got to times this whole bottom reaction by 2. So it becomes 2, 2, 2. Okay. And now we just add them up. So it becomes 2 silver ions plus nickel will give me 2 nickel. Sorry, won't give me two. Will give me nickel ions plus two silver. Okay. My advice is leave it like this. Don't bring the um, the, 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 the NO3 back. Okay. That's just a spectator ion. Okay. Right. So there are my three marks. And now they've gone and done exactly the same, and they've gone and set up a galvanic cell. They say which electrode. Ni or Ag must be connected to the negative terminal of the voltmeter. Well, the negative terminal of the voltmeter is going to be the positive there, so that's going to mean that it must be connected to the nickel. Right, and your reason for that is that your nickel is a stronger reducing agent. It's a stronger reducing agent. Because remember what's going to happen over here, look there, reducing ability, nickel is higher. It's a stronger reducing agent. 
can carry. In other words, it wants to be oxidized. It wants to give away electrons. And it's going to give away electrons. The electrons are going to move in that direction. Okay? So let's just check the question again. Which electrode must be connected to the negative terminal of the voltmeter? It will be the nickel. Write down the cell notation, and this is what we were busy with just now, right? Remember I said you were going to start off with my anode, and we already know that nickel is my anode, okay? So there was my, oops, there, there's my anode. So we're going to write down nickel, okay, because this is now my anode, okay, there's my nickel. And nickel, I'm going to draw my, 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 my um, line. And then nickel is going to form Ni2+. Okay. Right. So it's from my anode. And then I'm going to have, over here, I'm going to have my ion that is involved. So it's there. Okay. And then I'm going to have a double line which indicates my salt bridge. Oops, sorry. I'm going to have a double line which indicates my salt bridge. And now I'm going to go from my silver iron, I'm going to go from my iron to my cathode. Okay. Please don't write an and cat. That's just your mind map. So that's going to give me what was my iron. My iron was silver ions to become silver. Okay. Now let's just quickly explain this. What happened in this case? The nickel gave off electrons and became the nickel ion. Okay. Then I had a salt bridge and then my silver ions became silver. It is maybe a good idea to indicate here that this was my solid, that was in an aqueous solution, that was in an aqueous solution, and that that was my solid. And please remember, I now unfortunately didn't um, bring an example like that, but please remember that if you are working with a gas, you will very often see this. Right. Because remember, gas can't conduct electricity. So if you were going to have hydrogen gas, okay, as your anode, you, it's not going to conduct electricity. So we make use of the platinum. So you would, for example, have platinum and hydrogen, like that. Or in some cases, they would put it PT, H2, or something like that. So just make sure that you can interpret that as well. Right. Um, so, oh, we haven't finished the question. I'm ready to go and we haven't finished the question. Right. They say, yeah, write down the cell notation. So we've done that. There we go. And then they say, calculate the initial reading on the voltmeter if the cell functions under standard conditions. Okay. So what we need to do, the first thing we need to do over here is go to our formula sheet. Okay. Because remember, you have your formula sheet. That's the other way. You have your formula sheet. And you need to make sure that you use one of these. Okay. Please use one of them. I use the top one. That's the one I use. Whatever you use is not, doesn't matter. So the very, very first thing you do over here is you go and you write down the formula that you use. And please, the exact formula. Cell is equal to the cell potential of my cathode. And please, it's not a cat. It's a cathode minus the cell potential of my anode. You write it down exactly the way it is. Okay. Now you go back to your standard electrode potential table. And remember, what did we do over here? We had nickel, okay? And we've already deduced that nickel was my anode and silver was my cathode. Okay. Now you take those values and you substitute them in. Right, so it becomes the cell potential of my cell is equal to my cathode, which is 0, 0,80 minus negative 0, 0,27. 
write it down like this. Then you can change the signs and do whatever you want to. And then you should get that it's 1,07 volts. Okay. And you are going to get a mark for your formula and for those and for that. Please, if you get a negative here, they are either trying to trick you or number two, you've more than likely made a mistake. You've swapped your anode and your cathode around. So you go back there and you go and you have a look at that. Okay, because it should be positive because remember it's spontaneous. How will the voltmeter reading in question 7.2.3 be affected if the concentration of silver ions is increased? Right, remember what happens now. Silver is my, is my cathode. Okay, and at my cathode, reduction is taking place. Okay, so now I actually am good, because remember, reduction is the gain of electrons. So now I'm actually going to have, <coughs> excuse me, a chemical that wants more electrons, which means the reaction can take place quicker, and that means that the voltmeter reading will actually increase. Okay, why? Because it wants to, those electrons... Let me just explain it to you over here. Right, so what happens is these electrons that are being taken up here, more electrons can be given off, which means the more electrons that can be taken up, it will increase the um, EMA. Okay, so that is what we have to look at. This last question is quite a nice question. They don't ask you the reason for it. They just ask you will it increase, decrease, or remain the same. Um, that is a more higher type question. Right. Um, I hope I've answered all your questions on electrolytic and galvanic cells. Please make sure that you go and you make, sh you, ma you, you learn or you go through your science Bible and you know exactly what is required of you. There will be, this will be on the system and there will be um, a document. There are two documents. You should have them already as well. They are questions from previous exams with the answers. Please make sure that you do every single one of those questions because that's the only way you can get a level 7. And very important, if you can't get to the same answer as the memo, please ask somebody that knows. Thanks. Bye. Bye.